what's the health concern if we're upstairs in our house and someone's using their cell phone downstairs? So when you have multiple cell phones being used um, and they're in use, they're transmitting omnidirectionally in the room. So when that's occurring and you're upstairs, you have an omnidirectional signal that's being transmitted to you. So there's a, a very real concern to some extent, but not much because the distance. You're, you're far enough away from the transmitters that the distance reduces the potential dangers to your, to your body. With 5G, that's different, by the way. Let's say you and I are in a room. Both of us are using our cell phone. With 5G, the signal, they have re, re, um, uh, antenna phase arrays. They are actually focusing the antennas towards you. And by the way, they're focusing towards me. And let's say I'm in direct line to the cell tower between you and, between you and the tower. So that direct energy is hitting you, and by the way, going right through me. And then you think about where others are using this, the cell phone, the 5G cell phone. It is a MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. In other words, you have two signals that are focused on the cell phone, and both of them are going through me. That's how they get into the capacity, to, the ability to uh, move all that content, uh, that bandwidth will be available. They're using MIMO technology, and they're using multiple paths. So in cell phones today, we have one signal hitting our head. Then we have now two with 5G. And the energy power level that is, is starting, because the signal only goes to 850 feet, is now 20 watts at the, uh, at the, at the uh, cell tower, at the small cell tower. Um, on a standard 4G or less, it's, it's 60 watts being transmitted. So all of a sudden, in your front of your house, you've got 20 watts being transmitted, and I'm only 20 feet away, and you're 30 feet away, and I have high concentration of signals now towards my body and yours at twice the power levels, and it's in both directions. So now, it not only do I have what historically was 4G exposure, I now have twice that at a higher level with the cell towers. What do you think about wireless Bluetooth headphones? Are they a health concern or not? They, they are a health concern, and, and, and let me explain why. Uh, for, uh, when you have a, we were talking about the FCC standard. It's 1.6 watts per kilogram, right? 1.6 watts. Bluetooth is dot three watts. It's an off signal. It's just less power. If you use Bluetooth earphones, that Bluetooth signal on some, I, I can't claim all, but on many of the Bluetooth uh, devices, the way you get your stereo is from this one side communicating to the other side. So you have three watts, dot three watts, being transmitted through your head. You played football. I played football. I got hit in the head. I got concussion. I don't know. You maybe did, maybe you didn't. If you're concussed and your blood-brain barrier is down, dot one watts, 15 times less power than a standard cell phone, can mutate a cell in the frontal lobe. So that was a little bit longer uh, description, but there's no question about it. If you have um, devices that are transmitting through your head, they may present a problem for you long term. If it's for your kids, it's even worse because the signals now is, is going through a child's head. His whole life, her whole life, 
they're being exposed to these kinds of things. And me, I'm pretty old. I'm not going to. I'm going to die much earlier than they. I didn't have cell phones in my environment for only for the last 10, 15 years. They have their whole life. And when you do these kinds of things, there is a cumulative effects. Why has the country of Belgium banned the sale of mobile phones designed for young children? Well, for those very reasons. But there are others too, by the way. There is the emotional tie to devices that is actually growing in the industry. And there's, they're, they're being banned largely because of use. There is, it's like a addiction. You know, we, you, you got to look and see if your friend sent you a note. You, you got you, you to gotta check to see if you missed a message. That addiction is pretty severe in time with kids. And so they're really finding that the only way to sort of curtail this kind of trend is by banning it. So I think that's more the driver than the the physical potential for uh, um, biological impacts, but those are subtly involved as well. A court in Italy ordered the Italian government to publicize cell phone risks. Now in Italy, there are two court cases that have concluded that cell phone radiation caused tumors and people have gotten money for their cell phone related tumors. What countries aside from Italy advise and have information about how to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Italian one first because it's so important. It, it turns out they're, you're right. What, what they brought to court was a cell phone's being used. I got cancer in the frontal lobe. And in the first court case, they won. The service providers came in. And they said, nope, we're going to appeal because it doesn't make sense. We should be winning. That sec the, fir the first appeal lost. They lost again. Only recently, literally within the last month, the second appeal was settled. The judge said I couldn't rely on the evidence I was getting from the service providers. They were biased in my view. And there was no question in my mind the plaintiff was the winner. So the significance of that for us is hopefully a trend. Maybe we're finding out that through the courts there is some danger. And from court actions like that, it becomes common knowledge about the dangers. In fact, it parallels smoking, by the way. When I was 12 years old, I smoked. I wanted to be a big man. That was quite a number of years ago. And um, at that time, nobody knew that there was direct link to cancer. It wasn't common knowledge. Did you know the researchers knew at that time that there was clear evidence of linkage from smoking and lung cancer? So what did it take for it to become common knowledge? It was courts. The, the fact that you'll die from smoking cigarettes is on every package was because of the courts. And you know, as a side note, today the cancer over the 30 year period for uh, smoking and links to cancer has dropped by 50%. I don't know, it's half the people are smoking, but the incidence of cancer from smoking has dropped by 50%. But it took the court to make that claim. And by the way, it's also true with um, Berkeley. In uh, Berkeley, uh, this uh, over the past few years, they said we want we want a sticker on cell phones that says there may be potentially danger here. There were three different court appearances: one the original court, and then there were two um, appeals. And by the way, it was being appealed by CTIA, uh, which we spoke about before. And um, turns out they lost in court. So now we have instances where they're beginning to lose in court. 